this is the last part of uh, this uh, unit, which is devoted to international organization. This is a sort of specificity of the nuclear industry. It's uh, it's uh, international characteristic because, uh, as we have seen with Chernobyl, an accident somewhere may have uh, uh, consequences outside the country, as the the plume of of Chernobyl, which uh, spread <coughs> over all over or over Europe. So, uh, and and given the uh, the impact. Uh, in terms of, of media, in t terms of public opinion uh, of an accident in any country, it has an impact on the organization and the industry uh, everywhere. So th there is a say uh, in, in the nuclear industry, uh, an accident anywhere is an accident for everybody. <laughs> and so this explained the development of uh, several international organization uh, that plays an important role. The first one is the uh, International Atomic Energy Agency. This is a <coughs> United Nations organization which was established in 1957 in Vienna. Uh, uh, IEA has uh, several roles. The first one and the historical was to monitor the non-proliferation treaty. The IEA role is also to promote nuclear application, not only for energy, as a nuclear reactor, but also in other domains like the me medical utilization of isotope for treatment or diagnostic, or also uh, industrial applications such as uh, non-destructive uh, testing. But the, the, the role uh, that is interesting us today here is, is the role of IEA to promote safety cooperation between member states. We will develop a little bit later this uh, uh, role of uh, IEA. Um, another important uh, organization is the World Association of Nuclear Operators. This organization uh, was established in 1990 to foster safety performance among uh, its members and we will come again uh, to explain the, the acti main activity of, of WANO. And uh, <coughs> it's important to mention also the role of WENRA, uh, which is a club of uh, European regulators. So let's begin uh, with the, uh, the safety role of uh, IEA. Uh, the main role is to uh, analyze and uh, assess uh, safety. So the one, one program of the IEA has been to develop an incident reporting system, which is a database of worldwide incident reported by uh, national regulators. And uh, this system was established after uh, Three Mile Island and has collected in that uh, most of the operating experience uh, worldwide. Another important program is this uh, Operating Safety Analysis Review Team. It consists of a, a, a team of experienced specialists from different countries visiting a plant for two or three weeks and uh, observing uh, uh, the activities, uh, visiting in detail the plant, interviewing peoples, and at the end they prepare a report of what they have seen and what are their recommendations to improve safety. Similar to this uh, OSART, uh, who uh, focus on uh, operators and, and utilities, um, uh, IEA has developed uh, what they call an IRRS, which is uh, a process similar to OSART, but uh, which look at the regulatory organization and activities of uh, the different uh, country. Um, another program is this uh, international advisory group that was also created uh, soon after a Chernobyl accident. And it's a small group of very high level experts coming from different countries advising on major safety issue and uh, <coughs> they are able to uh, set back and to write reports on uh, uh, very fundamental uh, issues that could be sort of uh, high-level guides for uh, improving safety 
uh, we have uh, mentioned previously the INSAG4 reports, which uh, define the, uh, uh, the uh, safety culture concept, as well as the uh, INSAG13 reports, uh, which develop uh, what uh, should include in uh, uh, the, safety uh, the safety management. Also, um, I, uh, in the 90s, uh, prepare an international convention on nuclear safety. Uh, it's uh, uh, a commitment from uh, all the signatory, which are the most uh, most country are, are signatory uh, signatories of this uh, convention. It's some com commitment to uh, improve safety and to communicate between them the progress they are making uh, on, on safety and to define uh, priorities uh, for the for the years to, to come uh, an important activity also of the i is to develop safety standards uh, at the, the top they had to define uh, 10 safety fundamentals uh, but uh, below these fundamentals they are uh, general safety requirements and uh, also specific uh, safety requirements, for instance, for such kind of, of, of uh, fuel cycle facility, uh, reactors <coughs> at the design stage or reactors uh, for operation. There are also some uh, uh, specific uh, safety requirements on uh, uh, geolo ge geological uh, disposal. And uh, the, <coughs> the lower level um, of this hierarchy of, of standards are uh, the safety guides which are either generic in terms of activity of our facility but also specific to such or such uh, a plant or such or such uh, hazards or uh, way of uh, assessing uh, safety so this is a full collection of uh, documents uh, the safety fundamentals and the general safety requirements are binding but of course, the guides is just uh, guidance, and uh, uh, which are not uh, mandatory. Uh, you have here uh, the most important uh, requirement from the IEA to show what kind of uh, issues they are covering. So, in, in the general safety requirement, there are requirements on the organization of uh, government and regulators, how to manage uh, safety some uh, requirements on radiation protection, uh, how to assess the safety of a facility of, or activities, uh, how to manage radioactive waste uh, uh, and the decommissioning and also how to organize uh, emergency pre preparedness. And on a more specific requirement, you have the uh, requirement on site assessment uh, of course, safety on nuclear power plants at the design stage and the, the operating uh, stage, uh, safety of research reactor, uh, fuel cycle facility, radioactive waste disposal, and uh, also transport of uh, radioactive material. So WENRA, <coughs> this, uh, WENRA stands for West European Nuclear Re Regulator Association. It's a sort of club of regulators that was established in 1999 to try to harmonize safety requirements in, in Europe. Uh, when WENRAP uh, developed what they call reference level for operating reactors. These uh, reference level are not binding, but uh, all the uh, members of uh, this club, all these uh, European uh, uh, regulators, commits uh, to integrate the corresponding uh, reference level requirements into their uh, own national uh, regulation. In um, 2008, uh, a first uh, version of uh, this reference level was made public and uh, it was then updated after Fukushima in 2014. Beside this uh, reference level, which are actually some sort of requirements. Uh, the uh, WENRA developed also safety objective for uh, new reactors 
and uh, the first version of uh, this safety objective was published in 2010 and updated uh, more recently. And uh, an important aspect of uh, the safety objective is that the uh, WENRA uh, require like, that when uh, conducting a, a periodic safety review of existing reactors, the safety objective for new reactors be considered as a sort of reference. Uh, this is just a, a, a picture of the WENRA report that uh, explains all this uh, reference level for uh, existing reactors. Now this <coughs> last uh, organization, one of World Association of uh, Nuclear Operators, this is an independent association of all worldwide nuclear operators. And they have uh, four main programs. Uh, the, per the first one deals with operating experience. Uh, one uh, is able to make uh, in-depth analysis of some events with uh, recommendation to be implemented by members. And it covers, it could cover either uh, individual important events, but also uh, a collection of similar events that have a, a, in themselves a, a safety significance. A second program is to support technical exchange between uh, operators. Uh, it's, that allows to, uh, uh, to make some comparison of good practices uh, and also uh, to develop some uh, performance indicator uh, on, on safety and, and, and other aspects. And that's allowed to make a comparison between the different operators on uh, their performance and the way uh, or whether they are in the first quartile or in the lower quartile and to know the kind of progress they could, they could make. A third program is um, professional and technical development. This is done through the organization of, of seminars uh, and experts meeting in order to get more in-depth and, and make more detailed exchange in such or, or such uh, uh, issues safety issues. Uh, and the last one is peer review uh, and this is probably the most uh, significant and the most uh, efficient program of uh, WANO. Uh, WANO peer review uh, consists of a, a group of about uh, 15 sa staff members from all the company scrutinizing organizational and operational aspect of a nuclear plant. Uh, so they are visiting uh, uh, a nuclear plants for two to three weeks or so, looking at how the plant is operated, interviewing people, and uh, they define areas for improvements um, and uh, uh, good practices also. The, after uh, 18 months, a post peer review is organized to check the progress that have been made in the areas defined uh, as area for, for improvement. And uh, uh, this, um, uh, this is a sort of uh, control uh, whether progress has been made or, or not. And this report is known, of course, to the CEO. So this uh, program is uh, this kind of program is very successful. There are about uh, 50 uh, peer reviews organized each year, uh, and the, this uh, the, this program uh, uh, involves uh, imp implication, a strong implication of the CEO at the top of the company level, and there is a sort of a peer pressure because none of the CEO wants to be seen as uh, the black swan <laughs> in in the population. So uh, this is very efficient. You know, this peer, the, the, this is a pressure by the peers. Um, initially, the the peer review scope was focusing on operational aspects, but after Fukushima and the fact that it was discovered that some modification of the design was not taken into account at the uh, Fukushima plant. Uh, the, uh, the peer review view of WANO covers now design aspects uh, in order to ensure that uh, if 
some hardware modification was needed uh, for uh, taking into consideration some experience uh, so to, to ensure that these design modifications uh, are, are made. So it's a sort of conclusion of all these uh, cause and these international uh, aspects, uh, which is really important. Um, how, how, how far are we from an international safety regulator? Um, up to now, numerous initiative from regulators to, to, from regulators to, to, to harmonize safety requirements and practices have been made. I mentioned uh, when around in Europe, uh, we can mention also this uh, uh, MDEP, uh, which is an organization of uh, uh, regulators of countries uh, who, who, that are prepared to, to uh, construct new, new reactor and to exchange information and to exchange safety analysis. Uh, we can mention also uh, through the uh, OECD is a nuclear energy agency uh, uh, that have a lot of working groups uh, between uh, regulators and operators to try to progress and to harmonize and to take define uh, international position on some uh, important safety aspect. But all these uh, common position and all these activities not binding. So it's up to each regulator to, each regulator to decide whether or not to follow all that stuff. So. So, if we want really to have the same level of safety uh, worldwide, an international safety regulator with real powers of enforcement would be necessary, and especially for new nuclear countries. But there are big obstacles to that. First of all, uh, uh, nuclear is a, a very sensitive issue. Uh, and uh, governments and uh, well-established national regulators want to keep their independence. They don't want to have a super uh, regulator at the international level. Uh, another obstacle is that uh, a very large international organization uh, began to be uh, began to be very very quickly uh, a sort of bureaucracy, and so these are two. Uh, uh, very difficult obstacle for uh, uh, an international safety regulators to come uh, and certainly it will be uh, a long way to go <laughs> before uh, reaching uh, uh, such uh, international organization. 